live on the Goodwill and Growth for Africa Facebook page. Just uh, coming on five minutes before the quiz is due to start, um, just in case anybody's around and, uh, and wants to check out whether it's working, um, whether they can see me, whether they can get on. Hopefully that will be all fine and uh, you should be able to see me in your feed now um, if you're on Facebook and uh, Press the, uh, press the play button if you actually want to hear me talk. Um, so this is the second time that we've run a virtual quiz. Um, the whole idea is to keep in touch with everybody, um, our lovely supporters who, who follow us on Facebook, um, and also um, hopefully just to keep, uh, you know, Goodwill and Growth for Africa front of mind for you. Um, if you have fun tonight, please do, um, do press the donate button. Um, and uh, let us uh, let us have a few pennies um, to boost our coffers at this really tricky time. Um, so we're going to be doing the quiz again exactly the same as we did on Thursday. If anybody joined on Thursday, hopefully we'll have um, have some new people joining as well, uh, which would be great. It'd be lovely to have a have a really good crowd. Um, and um, just get get everybody sort of really engaged with this process. Um, we've got another four rounds today. I'm going to do uh, keep the quiz to an hour. Just make sure that you know people don't get distracted, or bored, or fed up, and want to go off and do stuff, um, and uh, and go and get stuff to eat. Oh, hello, Annette. Hi. Thanks for joining. Great. I'm not talking to myself, so that's brilliant. Um, so. Same routine as it was on Thursday. Um, just grab yourself um, a piece of paper and a pen or pencil. Um, write down the answers as they come to mind. We're going to do four rounds, eight questions in each round. And um, then at the end of the round, I'll just recap the questions and then we'll go through the answers. Um, just each, each round at a time. So if you do have something pressing to get away to, the oven timer goes off. I don't know, the pasta boils over, um, then you know you, you can just dash away and that should be fine. Um, the subjects of the quiz tonight, or the, the four subjects, should I say, the four rounds are going to be food. Oh hi Lynn and Al, great to see you again. See, see you. <laughs> um, brilliant, thank you for joining. So we've got um food one of my favorite subjects. Uh, we've got pop music, which I'm rubbish at. Um, I always uh, can never really remember artists or dates or anything like that. But anyway, I know some people are really, really good at it. Um, and then we've got sport, uh, which hopefully will be something that, uh, that a lot of you will enjoy. Um, if you can't participate at the moment in sport, at least you can, you can test your knowledge of sports, men and women in times gone by. And then the final round will be just a potluck. Uh, anything could come up in that round, literally anything. So, um, you know, it just gives everybody a little bit of a little bit of a chance to show off their bizarre kind of crazy knowledge or some little nugget of uh, knowledge that they've got very deep, deep in those grey cells. Um, hopefully it'll get the cogs moving. Um, beautiful evening um, in Stratford upon Avon. Um, it's it's been chilly today, but it's still bright and sunny, and the sky is as blue as blue. Um, in fact, my, my my son said to me earlier that it reminded him of South Africa because the sky was just so big, um, such a such a lovely big expanse of sky, um, uninterrupted by clouds or anything else. So, uh, you know, we we count our blessings for that definitely. So it's just about coming up to one minute to seven um, so we'll, we'll keep um, keep chattering away for a little bit longer um, as people join um, hopefully they'll just pop a little comment in just to just to let me know that they're there um, and uh, you know last uh, last time we did this we had a bit of banter going on between some of the uh, some of the teams um, you can play you know just test yourself play against yourself or um, play with um, whoever's in the house with you um oh my goodness hi douglas wow i'm <laughs> i'm being uh, i'm being apparently i'm on i'm being cast onto the big screen in the uh, in the model household so wow so, well <laughs> hope you don't have nightmares um so 
yeah, as I say, you can play um, amongst yourselves. Uh, if you've got a group of mates on the WhatsApp group, you can set your uh, set your minds against each other, just however you want to do it. It's um, it's 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 really you know entirely up to you. Um, it's just about having a little bit of fun and having a little bit of connection. So there it is, and it is seven o'clock. So I hope that you are all ready to go. So uh, if uh, New joiners, just to say, this is the second in the series that we're fondly calling Bray Cells for Gaga. I'm going to try and keep going with these on a regular basis. Um, if you missed the first one, don't worry. You can scroll down on our Goodwill and Growth for Africa Facebook page um, and play it back at your leisure. Um, so we had a bit of feedback on Thursday um, from last Thursday saying the questions were a bit too hard. Um, well, you know, I think it's it's a bit difficult but um, to, to, to pitch it, but hopefully um, it's, it's pitched better this time. Um, maybe it's just the subjects will be a little bit more appealing to people. So just to reiterate, we have four rounds, eight questions. The subjects are food, personal favorite of mine, pop music, not my strongest, sport, definitely not my, not, not my strongest, and then finally another potluck round um so that literally anything could come up in so it should, should be good fun um so we'll do the same format we will go through the eight questions you can write down the answers give a little bit of time in between a bit of a recap at the end and then we'll go through the answers and you can mark yourselves um, so that's, that's kind of how it goes so keep sending me comments um i think yes uh yesterday on thursday um i missed some of the comments some of them were coming up oh hello mick hi mick and the boys are on great um and i don't think i saw all of them until actually the quiz was over so um if i don't if i don't mess me me i'll talk if i don't mention you please don't be offended or upset um i'll try and keep a half an eye on the comments as they come up okay righty ho are we ready and the first round is food okay this is such a topical question if you were tucking into biltong what would you be eating so if you were tucking into biltong what would you be eating okay think i might have graham and irene on all the way from scotland hi and john i think john and jean have joined as well um, at rotary hi guys thanks for joining so the very first question in the food round if you were tucking into biltong what would you be eating question number two one for all you uh, paella makers out there saffron comes from which plant saffron comes from which plant beautiful yellow saffron but which plant does it come from question number three in the food round which town is renowned as the home of the pork pie which town is renowned as the home of the pork pie okay just watching the counter trying to give you an equal amount of time between each of the questions it's like my eyes must be going all over the place okay question number four what is the principal ingredient of hummus so what is the principal ingredient of hummus
Question number five. Halfway through the food round. Question number five. Which fruit is the basis of the spirit Calvados? Which fruit is the basis of the spirit Calvados? Okay, now this one is going to test my um, pronunciation skills. Be ready. <laughs> Bucatini, Trophée and Farfalle are all types of what? And please forgive the pronunciation if I've got it wrong. Bucatini, Trophée and farfalle are all types of what? Hello, looks like we've got somebody else joining. Salatin, hello. Welcome to Grey Cells for Gaga. We're just part way through the first round, which is food, but we will recap all the questions at the end of the round. So it's easy to catch up if you've just joined. Okay, so just that question one more time um, for uh, clarity of my pronunciation. Bucatini, trophé, and farfalle are all types of what? Question number seven. It's called zucchini in Italy and America, but how do we know this vegetable in the UK? Okay, so vegetable, it's called zucchini in Italy and America. But how do we know this vegetable in the UK? Ah, oh, brilliant, Irene. Glad you're doing well. Definitely, sometimes the subject is just, is just better for some people, isn't it? And uh, yeah, brilliant. I'm really pleased you're enjoying it. And Finally, question number eight in the food round. Who runs the famous restaurant, The Fat Duck at Bray, often cited as the best restaurant in the world? Wow. <laughs> so who runs the famous restaurant, The Fat Duck at Bray? often cited as the best restaurant in the world. Well, who knows? Who knows? Who knows that one? There we go. So that was the first round of food. So I'm going to just recap the questions in case you join partway through the round. Question number one on the food round. If you were tucking into biltong, what would you be eating? If you were tucking into biltong, what would you be eating? Oh, hello, Sophie. I think that's one of our volunteers. Sophie is just joining. Hi, Sophie. Thanks for joining. So question number one on the food round. If you were tucking into biltong, what would you be eating? Question number two. Saffron comes from which plant? Saffron comes from which plant? Question number three. Which town is renowned as the home of the pork pie? Which town is renowned as the home of the pork pie? Question number four. What is the principal ingredient of hummus? <laughs> Thank you, Sophie. Very good headset. Just feels a bit easier to, to speak. <laughs> okay. So what is the principal 
ingredient of hummus. Question number five. Which fruit is the basis of the spirit Calvados? Which fruit is the basis of the spirit Calvados? Question number six. Uh, this is my pronunciation being tested. So we have Bucatini, Trophé and Farfalle are all types of what? Question number seven. It is called zucchini in Italy and America, but what do we know this vegetable as in the UK? And then finally on the food round, question number eight. Who runs the famous restaurant, The Fat Duck at Bray? often cited as the best restaurant in the world. Okay, well, that's it. That's one round under our belt. Thank you, Irene. One round gone. So are you ready now to mark and see how you got on on the food round? So question number one, built on. As I said, very, very topical for us as we are Goodwill and Growth for Africa and Biltong is very, very well known as a, as a great snack in Southern Africa. It is in fact dried meat, lovely strips of dried meat. Saffron, that beautiful golden yellow colour in your Spanish paella and various other uh, culinary delights comes from the crocus flower. The crocus, it's little stamens inside the flower that have that gorgeous colour. And for all you pork pie fans out there, I'm sure you know that lovely hot water crust pastry and that lovely jelly and all that lovely meat inside is famously from Melton Mowbray, the Melton Mowbray pork pie. Okay, question number four. The principal ingredient of hummus, lovely for dipping with chips and lovely crudités and all sorts of things, is of course chickpeas. Chickpeas, lovely mashed up hummus. Question number five. The spirit that is derived from apples, oh, sorry, from, yeah, is Calvados, or Calvados is the spirit, it's derived from apples. Apples is the fruit, the answer that we were looking for. Okay. So all of these items, Bucatini, Trophé and Farfalle, are currently in terribly short supply in this country because they are, of course, all types of pasta, all types of pasta. Funny story, when, uh, when, when this all first kicked off and I, I did my first shop, I went to the pasta aisle and there was absolutely nothing there except uh, several packets of gnocchi. So obviously people aren't that bothered about stockpiling gnocchi, but all the other pasta had gone. So bucatini, trophé and farfalle are all types of pasta. Question number seven, zucchini is in fact something that we know as a courgette. So courgette, zucchini. And then finally, that famous chef uh, who runs the fat duck at Bray is the guy who does all the crazy stuff with bizarre colours and smoke and all sorts of bizarre ingredients. Um, the, the alchemist, shall we call him, Heston Blumenthal. Heston Blumenthal. Okay, so how did we all get on? Feeling a strong round, I think. I think there's there's some contenders here who feel like it might have been a strong round for them. Hopefully, hopefully that's the case, and it's been a good start to the evening. Okay, I'm on the orange squash today. Surprised at how dry my throat got on Thursday. Right. Let's go straight into the second round. Six out of eight, Irene. Lovely. Well done. Good to hear. Okay, so now we are on to pop music. Pop music. Question number one in the round of pop music. 
Woohoo! Eight, Mrs. Dooley, well done. And six for Lynn. Ah. Okay, let's see how we can do on pop music then. Question number one. Who sang the theme song to the Bond film Skyfall? Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> Who sang the theme song to the Bond film Skyfall? <laughs> I will, Irene, don't worry. <laughs> okay, that was question number one in pop music. The theme song to the Bond film, Skyfall. Question number two. Pop band Pulp hail from which city? The band Pulp hail from which city? Now, question number three. Which band recorded the acclaimed album Pet Sounds? Which band recorded the acclaimed album Pet Sounds? And uh, this uh, this quiz is really testing my uh, my uh, pronunciation skills. I have to say my linguistic skills because question number four has got another tricky one. In. X Factor judge. Okay, get this right. Take a deep breath. X Factor judge Tulisa Kondosavlos originally sang with which band? So all you X Factor fans out there, the X Factor judge, Tulisa Contestavlos, originally sang with which band? Can I just call her Tulisa from now on? Okay. And question number five in pop music question number five jackie tito jermaine and marlon were the less well-known members of which popular american pop group okay so we have jackie tito jermaine and Marlon, and they were all less well-known members of which popular American pop group? Question number six. Whose alter egos included Villa Ricky Dicky and Clever Trevor? Whose alter egos included Villa Ricky Dicky and Clever Trevor? Okay, don't know. I think that's one you either know or you don't know that one. So, question number seven. Which US singer was known as the man in black? Which US singer was known as the man in black? And here we are coming up to question number eight in our pop music round. Don't worry if you've missed any, I'll be going back over them just after this final question number eight. 
So here it is. Before going solo, Rod Stewart mostly sang with which band? So before going solo, Rod Stewart mostly sang with which band? Okay, so a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a spread across the decades there in, in that pop music round. So let's go back over the questions again. And here we go. Question number one. Who sang the theme song to the Bond film Skyfall? Who sang the theme song? to the Bond film, Skyfall. Well, Mick, is that you doing very, very well? Or are you being, being very confident? Or is that the actual lyric from the song? <laughs> Question number two. Pop band Pulp hail from which city? Pop band Pulp hail from which city? Question number three. Which band recorded the acclaimed album Pet Sounds? Which band recorded the acclaimed album Pet Sounds? Question number four. X Factor judge to Lisa, here we go, to Lisa Kondosavlos, Kondosavlos, originally sang with which band? So the X Factor judge to Lisa, I'm not going to say it again, originally sang with which band? And another band question for question number five. We have these four members, Jackie. Tito, Jermaine and Marlon were all in the same band. They were the less well-known members of which popular American pop group? Question number six. Whose alter egos included Billericky Dicky and Clever Trevor? Billericky Dickie and Clever Trevor, alter egos of which song, songmeister? And question number seven, which US singer was known as the man in black? Which US singer was known as the man in black? And question number eight on the pop round, pop music round is, before going solo, Rod Stewart mostly sang with which band? Rod Stewart, before going solo, mostly sang with which band? What are you confused about, Mick? Do you need another, another question repeating or? Okay, so we're nearly halfway through, halfway through our time. We're halfway through our questions. We just now need to get the answers. So if you're ready, I don't know if you're swapping papers to mark other people's or you're just marking yourself. Um, but if you're ready, we will go through the answers. So question number one. Amazing anthem, Skyfall, from the Bond film, was, of course, performed by Adele. I don't know if she wrote it as well, but it was certainly performed by her. The band Pulp, they all come from Sheffield. Sheffield, quite a city of music, I think, Sheffield. Quite a lot of bands um, come from Sheffield. Okay. 
Now that album, the acclaimed album Pet Sounds, going back a bit, it's the Beach Boys. Beach Boys. Pet Sounds. The answer to question number four, to Lisa, the X Factor judge, before she joined X Factor, she used to sing with a group or a band rather called N Dubs. N hyphen D U B Z. N Dubs. Okay, question number five. The answer to question number five is the Jackson Five. Jackie, Tito, Jermaine, and Marlon were four of the Jackson Five, the fifth member, of course, being Michael, the most well known. Okay. Oh, looks like Grace has done well on the music. Fantastic. Right, question number six. Question number six. So, did you get this right, Mick? This is the person whose alter egos was Billericky Dicky and Clever Trevor was Ian Dury. Ian Dury from Ian Dury and the Blockheads, uh, Billericky Dicky. Okay. So number seven, the man in black, the US singer known as the man in black was Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. And final answer in pop music, Rod Stewart, before he went solo, before he had a solo career, he mostly sang with a group called The Faces. Okay, there we go. That's it. That's it. Halfway through. That's your food and your pop music gone. And how are the scores looking? Is that a better round for some than food or about the same? A couple of ticky ones in there. Oh, well done, Kieran. Kieran obviously got a lot of the music references as well as, as his uh, has his culinary expertise on the first round. Going strong, Kieran. Okay. Have a quick slip. Still lovely and bright outside, isn't it? Great to have these long sunny evenings. Right, turning over the page because now we are in our third round, and the third round is all about sport. So not much live sport, no live sport actually really happening at the moment, but lots of sports to look back on. Oh, five, Lynn. Oh, that's okay. It's okay. You did well in the first round. All right. So we have got a, a quite a variety of sports actually. So here we go. Lord Sebastian Coe was in charge of the London 2012 Olympic Games. But at which Olympic cities did he win his own Olympic gold medals in the 1500 metres in both 1980 and 1984? So where did Lord Sebastian Coe win his own gold Olympic medals in the 1500 metres? Need two cities to get this answer. One was one in 1980, the 1980 Olympics, and the second in the 1984, obviously Summer Olympics. Okay. Can we can we remember that far back? That's the question. Were some of us even around in 1984? Probably not. Definitely not, actually. <laughs> Right. Okay. Question number two. Sport. Which gold medal winning Paralympian is known as the werewolf? Which gold medal winning Paralympian 
is known as the werewolf. I don't know why. I don't know if he's just really hairy, really astute. <laughs> but he's a gold medal winning Paralympian and his nickname is the werewolf. Who is he? Okay, question number three. A little bit closer to home for us, but not for everybody on the call, obviously. But this one is a bit closer to home for us. Which English county cricket club are based at Edgbaston? Which English county cricket club are based at Edgbaston? And question number four in the round of sport is going to be another challenge for my pronunciation. Doing well today. I didn't really choose these very well, did I? Anyway, there we go. Let's give it a go. World famous gymnast from the 1970s, Nadia Comaneci, came from which country? So a world famous gymnast from the 1970s, Nadia Comaneci. But which country does he come from? Okay. We're halfway through the sport round. And so we have question number five. Question number five in the sport round is England World Cup manager Alf Ramsey previously had managed which team? I think that's football. England World Cup manager Alf Ramsey previously had managed which team? Oh, who's Phil? Phil on? Hello, Phil. <laughs> Can't see a comment from Phil. Okay, and here we are now. We're at question number six. We're nearly through, Irene. Don't worry. Question number six on sport. In which sport would you come across a competition called a Madison? In which sport would you come across a competition called a Madison? Okay, a Madison, a competition called a Madison. Which sport is that? Question number seven. Okay. Ah, hi, Denise and Phil. Thank you for joining. Okay, question number seven in sport. Boca Juniors and Riva Plate are famous football rivals in which country? Boca Juniors and Riva Plate are famous football rivals, but which country do they play their sport? Do they play their football? Okay, and sticking with football, sorry, we're a bit football biased, aren't we? Anyway, sticking with football for the final question in the sport round. Question number eight. <laughs> I'm getting my pronunciation checked, name checked by my son. 
but it's river plate. I don't have to say river plate. <laughs> it's river plate. Boca Juniors and river plate. Thank you. <laughs> so finally, question number eight. The Neville brothers, Phil and Gary, both played for Manchester United and England at football. But at what sport did their sister Tracy represent her country? Okay, so the famous, well-known Neville brothers, Phil and Gary, they both played for Manchester United and for England in their sport of football, but their equally sporty sister, Tracy, also represented her country, but which sport did she excel at? Okay. And that's it. That's your lot for sport. Eight questions of sport. Here we go with a brief recap. Okay, replay. <laughs> Question number one. Lord Sebastian Coe was in charge of the London 2012 Olympic Games. But at which Olympic cities did he win his own Olympic gold medals in the 1500 metres in both 1980 and 1984. Question number two. Which gold winning, sorry, gold medal winning Paralympian is known as the werewolf? Which gold medal winning Paralympian is known as the werewolf? Question number three. Which English county cricket club is based at Edgbaston? Which English county cricket club is based at Edgbaston? Oh, hello, my dad's joined. Hi, mum and dad. Thank you for joining. Question number four. World famous gymnast from the 1970s, Nadia Comaneci, came from which country? Nadia Comaneci, which country did she come from? Hi, Francis. Oh, don't worry, it's fine. You're in time for the potluck round at least. Just going over the sport questions. Question number five. England World Cup manager Alf Ramsey previously managed which team? So England football World Cup manager Alf Ramsey previously had managed which team? Question number six. In which sport would you come across a competition called Madison? In which sport would you come across a competition called a Madison? And question number seven, Boca Juniors and River Plate are famous football rivals in which country? Boca Junior and River Plate are famous football rivals, but in which country? And the final question in the round for sport tonight is about the Neville family. The Neville brothers, Phil and Gary, both played for Manchester United and England in football. But at which sport did their sister, Tracy, also represent her country? So Phil and Gary Neville played for Manchester United and England football. But Sister Tracy also represented her country, but which sport did she, um, did she participate in? Okay, that's your eight questions on the round of sport with three quarters of the way through this little uh, mini quiz for Tuesday evening. And Let's go for the answers. Are we ready? So those Olympic Games from 1980 and 1984, when Sebco won the gold medals on the 1500 meters were in Moscow 
and Los Angeles. Moscow and Los Angeles is what I'm looking for. Question number two. That gold medal winning Paralympian known as the werewolf is in fact David Weir. David Weir is a wheelchair racer and his nickname is the werewolf. I'm going to have to Google him later to find out why. Question number three. Close to home, as I said, la la la, Warwickshire. The, the English County Cricket Club, based at Edgbaston, is of course the Warwickshire Cricket Club, which is our home county. <laughs> okay, so 1970s, Nadia Comaneci who was the gymnast, the world famous gymnast. She came from Romania. Romania is what I'm looking for. Nadia Comaneci. Okay, the first of the football related questions. Alf Ramsey previously managed Ipswich Town. Ipswich Town, very successful eight years of managing Ipswich Town, took them from Division Three um, to win the Division One Championship. So it says here. Okay, question number six. Now I certainly expect that, uh, that the models will have got this one right. So the competition called a Madison is cycling, track cycling. Okay, it says it's a type of team race track cycling and Madison. Boca Juniors and River Plate are the famous football rivals from Argentina. Argentina. And apparently Boca Juniors or Boca are Maradona's favourite team. Who knew? And then finally, the Neville family, Phil and Gary footballers, but Sister Tracy represented her country playing netball. Netball. Okay, that's it. That's your eight answers. Does anybody want me to go over the answer to any questions? Or are you all up to speed? And let's see what those scores look like. Expecting some strong rounds here, guys. <laughs> Douglas, are you trying to tell me that was the only one you got right, the cycling one? <laughs> okay tossing up those answers oh well, that's all right francis that's a really good result if you got two out of the three that you heard <laughs> Brilliant. Good to hear. Right, now then, so we come for a really nice, strong finish. Oh, fantastic. Well done, Gav. Gav came in to, uh, to assist the, uh, the sport round in the Dooley household. Right, so here we are, the final round, the fourth round, and this is potluck. So this could be literally anything, any anything at all. Um, and uh, you'll probably all groan at me. <laughs> you'll probably all groan at me for the first question in the potluck round. But sorry, it is potluck, and this is what came out. So question number one in potluck. Who was the last of the Tudor monarchs? A bit of history there. Who was the last of the Tudor monarchs? The last of the Tudor monarchs. Question number two. Where would you most commonly find a clef? 
where would you most commonly find a clef? <laughs> just got a WhatsApp from Al asking if you can just add all the scores together. <laughs> of course you can. <laughs> okay, so question number two in potluck again. Where would you most commonly find a clef? Question number three. In history, we refer to years as being BC or AD. BC stands for before Christ, but what does AD stand for? So those initials in history, we refer to years as either being BC or AD. BC stands for before Christ, but what does AD stand for? Let's see how your Latin is. Question number four. Question number four. How many are there in a gross? Okay, it's a unit of measurement. How many are there in a gross? So we're halfway through the final round of potluck. Potluck questions. Question number five. Gloucester Old Spot is a type of what? Gloucester Old Spot is a type of what? Ah. Type of what? Gloucester Old Spot. Question number six. What are pipistrels? Question number six again. What are pipistrels? Question number seven, the penultimate question in the potluck round and the penultimate question in the quiz this evening. Baloo features in which book and film? Baloo features in which book and film? And we've done it. We get to the final question in the potluck round. The final question is, William Tell famously shot an apple placed on the head of his own son. Which country was he from? William Tell famously shot an apple from the head of his own son. But which country was he from? There we are. Hot luck. Mm. Luckily, William Tell's son had good luck. Otherwise, it could have been a very different story. Right. So let's just go over those questions again in case there was one that you missed you want to think about again. Question number one. Who was the last Tudor monarch? The last in line of the Tudor monarchy. Who was that? Where would you most commonly find a clef? Where would you find a clef? In history, we refer to years as being BC or AD. BC means before Christ, but what does AD mean? What does AD stand for? 
Question number four, potluck. How many are there in a gross? How many are there in a gross? Question number five. Gloucester Old Spot is a type of what? Gloucester Old Spot. What is it? Question number six. What are pipistrels? What are pipistrels? Question number seven. Baloo features in which film and book? Baloo, which film and book? And finally, William Tell famously shot an apple from the top of his son's head. But which country was he from? William Tell shot an apple placed on his own son's head. But which country was he from? Okay, so. Just a few minutes to go, and then we've got uh, we've we've got to tot up our uh, tot up all of our answers, and I'll just give you now the answers to the potluck round. So the last in the line of the Tudor monarchs was the Virgin Queen Elizabeth the First. Elizabeth the First, the last of the Tudor monarchs. Where would you find a clef? Well, most commonly, you'd find it on a sheet of music. Sheet of music. Not quite sure. One of those or one of those really funny ones. But anyway, there we go. On a sheet of music. So now testing your Latin a little bit. So if BC stands for before Christ, AD stands for Anno Domini which is in the year of the Lord, Anno Domini. How many are there in a gross? 12 twelves, 144. 144 in a gross. Oh, jolly good. Brett got the history question. There you go, you see, there's that, that nine in history. GCSE, fab. How many are there in a gross? 144. Gloucester Old Spot. Gloucester Old Spot is a pig. Pig. The Gloucester Old Spot. And then these next creatures, pipistrels, not the most popular creature in the world at the moment. They are bats. Pipistrels. They are a type of bat. Baloo, Baloo the bear is, of course, in Jungle Book. The bear necessities. Oh, yeah. Baloo, Baloo the bear in Jungle Book. And William Tell hailed from Switzerland. William Tell, who shot the apple from the top of his son's head. He was Swiss. He was from Switzerland. So there we have it. There's all your answers. I hope you've done well in your potluck round. It's all a bit of a mix. You never know what's going to come out the bag, but that's what we've got today. So I hope you've all enjoyed it. It's been great to see some people back and great to see some new people joining as well. So really thank you. And please do tell everybody about it. Um, I'm going to try and give up. Planning to do these at least for the next two or three Tuesdays. Um, so Tuesday, the 21st at seven o'clock. Um, we'll be back again with another set of questions, um, trying to organise some slightly different events for Thursdays. Um, so maybe maybe some a um, uh, little bit of music, some gigs, gaga. Um, just trying to pull some of that together. Don't know whether we'll manage to to make it um, make it for this Thursday, but uh, trying to pull it together. But definitely going to have another quiz next Tuesday. Um, so I hope you can join in again. I hope you have a lovely evening. Enjoy the rest of your week. And if you had fun and you fancy doing it, um, you know, please do just throw a couple of quid into the donate button. Um, it'd be greatly appreciated. I've got lots going on um, in South Africa. It's it's pretty tough um, over there at the moment. Um, and and the little school in Tanzania is is trying to do home home. Uh, Oh, homeschooling, homeschooling. So if you saw our Facebook page today, you'll, you'll have seen the girls lining up to get their homeschooling hats. 
so lot, lots going on all over um, and uh, you know we're just keeping going as much as we can so thank you so much for joining um, please come back again next Tuesday thank you Francis thank you Douglas thank you very much thank you Annette seven Lynn that's fantastic really good and um, yeah brilliant have a lovely evening everybody hope to see you again next Tuesday seven o'clock same place Gaga Facebook page. Thank you. Bye-bye.